All right, the facts of the case uh, in Sweat vs. Painter were that Herman Marion Sweat, an African-American citizen, uh, applied for admission to UT Law School and was rejected solely because he was African-American. Um, Sweat then asked for a writ of mandamus to compel the school to admit him to uh, the university. Um, the state court upheld Sweat's 14th Amendment claim but denied him the writ uh, because they said there was another separate but equal institution at the University of Texas for black students. The case was eventually heard by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1950 and the lower court's decision was reversed. The question was whether or not the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause applies to the states in the causes of admitting students to a public university, specifically with their regards to race. The holding was Chief Justice Vinson ruled 9-0 that equal protection under law applies to the individual and at, as such the states must provide equal public educational opportunities regardless of race. Although the majority opinion states that the court's decision is not a reconsideration of Plessy v. Ferguson, the ruling that separate but equal treatment based on race was constitutional effectively overturned that case. It later impacted the decision in the Brown case in which the court found that segregated public schools were un unconstitutional. By applying the 14th Amendment to the issue of segregation, Sweat enables the court to move one step closer to securing greater equality among U.S. citizens. Uh, Sweat's argument was this. He made the case that UT Law School denied him admission just because of his race, which violated his Fourth Amendment guarantee to equal protection under law. Although the court claimed that the new school was essentially equal in providing black students the same privileges, advantages, and opportunities for the study of law, as it provided white students, Sweat made a claim that the appellate court, and eventually to the Supreme Court, that there was, in fact, substantial inequality between the educational, educational opportunities provided for black and white students. He specifically cited that the fact that the new law school for black students lacked legal accreditation and there was discrepancy between the quality or quantity of the professors and library books at each institution. He argued that the inequality of the segregation was unconstitutional. That's our case. Hey! hey, hey, hey. Stick